I posted a video a while back showing what upgrades I have done to my CZP10F. I will link that video in the description. I got a comment on that video from the user M3Beamer asking how many rounds I have through the gun with the Overwatch Precision Trigger Kit and if the trigger weight lightened up at all. This person is looking for a three to three and a half pound trigger break on their P10 uh, without losing the nice defined wall after the take up. This piqued my curiosity, so I figured I would dive into it. Um, in this video, I am going to go in depth on the theory and operation of the P10 striker and trigger system. It is an interesting design and I haven't seen any videos going over it. In my opinion, the CZP10 series did not get nearly enough love. They are a fantastic firearm. I will also compare it to the Glock and Smith & Wesson M&P systems. I will then show where the system can be polished for higher performance. Lastly, I will install four different striker springs and see what the results are. Now, Apex Tactical offers a trigger kit that includes a new disconnector, which will change the path the sear takes as it travels rearwards and releases the striker, which greatly reduces trigger weight, but at the expense of the defined wall. Apex states that it turns the break of the trigger into more of a roll, similar to a Glock, uh, likely kind of how a Glock trigger feels with a reduced power connector. I will link to the Apex uh, install video in the description as it is pretty informative. I personally like a nice defined wall as well and a crisp break with minimal creep. Uh, the Overwatch Precision Trigger Kit is great in this regard, so I will only be considering the performance and trigger weight with this kit installed, but the factory trigger action with the factory shoe and factory striker is very similar. Um, I also have some range footage of this gun, so I will throw that in now. the Overwatch Precision Trigger Kit comes with obviously a trigger shoe. This is the factory one. I really did not like the profile of this. Um, and it comes with a new striker that is NP3 coated for um, better lubricity properties and uh, longer life. And it has a revised geometry that they say reduces the trigger break by half a pound or so, and I agree with that. And um, it also reduces the pre-travel of the trigger. Before I start my polishing or uh, swapping out to aftermarket striker springs, I'm gonna get a baseline of trigger pull weight. In the last video, I showed that I did some polishing on the sear, but honestly, I kind of half-assed it. Uh, and so I'll redo that today. So anyways, this is the baseline, Overwatch Precision trigger and striker installed with the factory striker spring and I'm going to get my trigger pull weights here and try to pull it in the same spot every time four and a half pounds four and a half pounds four and a half pounds very consistent take up nice defined wall it's going to break right at 90 degrees there's a tiny bit of creep and then a nice crisp break and snap. Reset is short and very, very positive. So first we're going to look at the CZP10 uh, striker and striker block system compared to the M&P 2.0 and a generation three Glock. So here's the striker. It's spring loaded. There's the striker face. Um, and the striker block is this little lever which gets pulled to the side like this as the trigger comes rearward. Whereas the M&P 2.0 has a plunger that pushes out of the way when the trigger bar comes back because the trigger bar has a little uh, actuator sticking up that comes back and hits this and pushes it out of the way. Same thing with the Generation 3 Glock, except the firing pin block is way up here at the front, but they operate exactly the same. Just to show, uh, the striker block system on the P320 is completely contained in the striker assembly, similar to the CZ, except this one has a little hook. 
And right now in this position with this little tang sticking up, it is physically blocking the firing pin or the striker from coming forward anymore. As you pull the trigger back, there's a little lever that gets pivoted up into this and depresses this and then that allows the striker to come forward the rest of the way. The way you take the pistol down is just like a Glock, obviously, right there. All Glocks take down like this. How the P10 gets taken down. How the M&P gets taken down is this lever right here. How the P320 gets taken down is this lever right here. I like this so much better. I wish everyone would do this. Just give me a nice big lever to, to turn out of the way instead of trying to grab onto these stupid little tabs. Trigger and striker actuation system on this is a, a partially pre-cocked striker, almost identical to the function of um, a Glock trigger, except it's uh, done in quite a different way that I think is a little bit interesting. So. Here's the sear that is uh, directly attached to this bar down here that goes around the magwell and is attached to the trigger. As you pull the trigger rear rearward, it cocks the striker the rest of the way. And then there's a little tang right here that goes under this, which is the disconnector. And it has a contour that pulls that sear down and out of the way as it travels rearward. This is exactly like how a Glock works, where as you pull the trigger rearward, the trigger bar back here hits this contour on the underside of the connector and gets pulled downwards. So this is the connector. I mean, it's also the disconnector, right? Um, and same thing, this little bar right here that goes crossways like this and moves like this achieves the same function on the P10 as um, this connector does on the Glock, but it does it in a different way. So it has a little tang, it hits a contour and gets dropped down as it comes back. And then as the slide starts reciprocating, that little disconnector comes out of this notch and gets pushed in. And what happens is, is boop, there we go. Uh, sear comes back up and catches the striker as the slide comes forward. And then uh, you can see that it is still depressed and stuck in there. Well, as I pull the trigger forward, it pulls that tang out and allows this to go back that way. And then it resets this tang in front of the contour that drops it back again. Whereas with a Gen 3 Glock, you're at the rear here, your slide, well, it works pretty similar. It's just kind of on the opposite side in a different piece, but your slide pops this out of the way, your trigger bar pops up, and then as you pull your trigger back forward again, it pops back under that connector and allows it to engage with that contour and be dropped as it moves backwards. Uh, so pretty interesting system. Um, this little trapezoid right here uh, is what pulls or pushes um, this out of the way on the striker, the little striker block. And then of course on a Glock or the M&P, it has this little tang or tab sticking up off of the trigger bar. Here it is on the M&P 2.0 and that pushes the firing pin safety block uh, plunger. So uh, the CZ and the Glock work the same pretty much in terms of being a, a, a partially pre-cocked striker. And as you pull the trigger back, it cocks the striker spring, striker the rest of the way, pulling it against the striker spring. And so the striker spring plays a huge influence on the weight of your trigger pull. Um, and just like a Glock, this has springs. There's one, two down in there that actually um, help pull the trigger back. Uh, and I don't think there's an aftermarket option for these springs. I haven't seen them, but of course on Glocks, they have a similar system where this spring is extended, then it collapses as you pull the trigger back. So if you wanna lower your trigger weight on a Glock, you actually put a heavier one of these springs back. So it's actually helping the trigger be pulled back against the striker spring. M&P is a lot different. 
because it uh, is a fully cocked striker. The sear is fixed right here and only pivots. Your trigger bar comes back, hits this actuator, and then that drops your sear back. So let's take a look at that there. Drops your sear right there. I prefer this trigger system. It's, it's a lot more clean. Um, you get a better break. You can dial in the trigger system a lot more with this spring up here that, you know, gets pulled uh, as the trigger's being pulled back rather than collapsing as the trigger's being pulled back like on the Glock. So I prefer this system a lot. Uh, I think the design and execution of this one is better than a Glock and it produces a better uh, trigger pull. Another interesting thing about the CZ P10 series is that the slide stop doesn't catch the slide here like it does on a Glock or the M&P 2.0. It catches the slide right here on this face. So it's actually grabbing this breech face right here. And this is the piece that uh, strips the round out of the magazine. So uh, I haven't seen that before. That's pretty interesting. Um, of course, the actuator tab that gets lifted up by the magazine follower is right there on this side, which is where they all are. But both the M&P 2.0 and the Glock catch the slide right here when the uh, slide stop is engaged. So this is the trigger bar assembly and sear housing. And from the bottom side, we can see right here, there's that little tang that's attached to the sear. And you can see the little groove that it rides in, right? And so that is the angle right there that pulls the sear down and out of the way of the striker to release it forward. And then another thing you can see is when you push this in, you can see a larger open gap to the side of it. So the trigger bar is here. And then when this gets pushed, pops up into that and that's what allows the uh, sear to come up and catch the striker and then when the slide goes back into battery that allows this uh, connector plunger to come back out and you let the trigger forward and it comes out and the connector moves that way, and now the trigger action is reset again. So the angle on that connector right there that pulls the trigger bar down and pulls the sear down, uh, here's a couple of Glock connectors. I mean, that is the same as right here where the trigger bar hits this and then gets pushed down. So. Like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, there's an Apex Tactical Kit that actually has a new one of these. It has a new connector that you replace, and it changes the angle under here where the trigger bar rides in, much like the difference in these two angles you can see here. This is a factory Glock connector and a factory minus Glock connector. So you can see that when the trigger bar comes back, what creates the wall is it hitting this before it starts sliding down, and if you take this and put it at more of an angle like this, well, then you get less of a wall and more of a rolling break because it kind of comes back and down all in one motion because this angle is more this way. So I'm guessing that's what the Apex Tactical Connector does, and I'm not interested in that. And I don't, I don't run minus connectors in my Glocks. I run dot connectors. They're a nice middle ground between the factory really heavyweight connector and the really... Uh, lightweight but rolling break of the minus connector so anyways uh same function as the glock connectors but it's just executed in a completely different way uh, and it's pretty interesting so now i'm going to take this the rest of the way apart and we'll look into what we can polish okay i got this thing all torn down before i do any polishing work i'm going to show you can see the wear on it right there so all these parts are like metal injection molded um Actually, this trigger bar doesn't look like it. It looks more like cast. This is definitely metal injection molded. Um, so this is going to get polished, and you can see the wear marks where it's sliding in and out of the sear block here, or the sear housing. 
So I'm going to touch this up a little bit more. I'm going to polish this face where the trigger bar hits it. This is the tang on the trigger bar that hits it. So this is going to get polished. I'm going to polish this trapezoid, this face, and this face, uh, and around this corner, while being careful not to change the geometry because this is what actuates the uh, striker block. So that's a very important uh, critical safety feature that we don't want to change, but I do want to slick that up. Um, and then this is the actual sear face itself, and you can see my half-ass uh, polished job from the first time I did this, so I'm going to go ahead and make that better as well. And those are actually the only areas I think I need to polish on this uh, to improve the trigger action. Smoothed out the sides of this, knocked down the high spots right there, there, and there. And then you can see right there, I polished that edge where the... Uh, trigger bar rides, polish that little nub that interfaces with that angle, polish that uh, sear face better, got a little bit of a polish on those faces right there, those are pretty rough, and then I also polished this edge right here and this edge right here because I could see some wear marks and obviously you can see I took some high spots off. And then I also, uh, it slips between these two things and it's actually pretty tight. Uh, and I could feel it kind of a little bit gritty in there. So I took some uh, really fine sandpaper and got in here and did those edges too. So keep in mind this uh, striker that comes with the Overwatch Precision Trigger Kit is NP3 coated. So you're going to want to leave that coating on there. That's a very nice coating. It's got great lubricity uh, properties. It's going to be very smooth and it's also really nicely machined out of stainless steel. If you were using the factory striker, um, you can see where uh, it started to wear in, but you'd want to polish this face right here, being careful not to uh, change any angles or knock this sharp edge off. So after that polish job, I immediately notice that my take up is smoother and my reset is a lot smoother. Right at about four and a half. Four and a half. About four and a half. So um, the polishing didn't affect the trigger weight at all. Now I have swapped the factory striker spring out for the Cajun Gunworks 4.4 pound striker spring. I don't know what the weight of the factory one is. Trigger pulls with the Cajun Gunworks spring. Three and three quarters. Um, three and three quarter pound. Slightly above three and three quarter pounds. Next up is the first of the two HB Industries springs. This is the blue one, which claims uh, minus 10% weight. Slightly above three and three quarters. Just a hair under four. Just a hair under four. So it seems that the uh, blue minus 10% HB Industries spring is pretty close to the Cajun Gunworks spring. Last spring that I have, uh, HB Industries red spring, which claims to be minus 15% weight. Four pounds. Four and a quarter. Slightly over four pounds. So that minus 15% red spring is heavier than the minus 10% blue spring. If you wanted to go lower, you could take one of these aftermarket springs, uh, likely one of the reduced power ones, and start cutting coils off of it, one or two coils at a time. And check your trigger pull weight after each one when you get it where you like it probably take it to the range and make sure you don't get a whole bunch of light primer strikes. That would be one way to do it. Another way, here's the factory uh, P10 spring, and here's a factory Glock spring. I betcha they're interchangeable. 
I mean, I run uh, extra power Glock springs in my M&P 2.0s to uh, mitigate light primer strike issues that I was having on one of those guns. Um, so, hmm, this has me curious now. So what I've just installed on here is the lightest Glock striker spring that I believe you can buy. It's a two pound spring from Zev Performance and we're gonna see what this does. 3 and a quarter pound. 3 and a quarter pound. 3 and a quarter pounds. So it seems about the lowest trigger pull weight you can get on one of these while still maintaining a nice defined wall is about 3 and a quarter pounds and um you know of course if you wanted to run a 2 pound Glock striker spring in this that's your decision. Um you know, of course, you'd want to prove it out with your ammo and make sure you're not getting uh, light primer strikes. And obviously, that light of a striker spring and that light of a trigger pull would not be recommended for uh, duty carrier defensive purposes of any sort. Um, but there it is. Seems like three and a quarter pounds is about as low as you can go uh, on this platform while maintaining a nice... Uh, distinct wall and crisp break. Um, as for me, I'm going to throw the uh, Cajun Gunworks uh, striker spring back in here because um, that feels really nice and I know it works. No light primer strikes and I'm happy with it.